Hey everyone, this is Tommy Black, and welcome to Five or More Questions, episode number 34. On this show, I talk with artists about their current projects, stories they've never told before, and their connection to the Viper Room on the Sunset Strip. Today we're talking to Peter DiStefano from Porno for Pyros, Lance Herbstrong, and lots of film scores. So let's give him a call. Hi, Tommy. Hi, Peter. How you doing, man? Doing great. How are you? I'm um, I'm good, thanks. Um, so tell uh, tell me what well, where did this all begin? Where Where are you from, Peter? I was born in Santa Monica, California. Mm. Uh, Santa Monica Hospital in 1965. Mm -hmm. I was the first generation born out here from parents from Sicily. Hmm. And uh, so I'm an Italian American. I was raised in Santa Monica, and and my father did music, and I got really affected by Elvis and the Beatles, and and the Rolling Stones and Led Zeppelin and Hendrix, and you know, uh, many others. And then uh, I just felt like music was so, is something I have to do. Mm -hmm. And it's not like I want to do it, it's I have to. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if that makes sense. I hear that. <laughs> um, are you, where are you right now? Are you in Santa Monica right now? Well, no, right, right now I live, I own a home in Camarillo, but I work out of Santa Monica a lot. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of film uh, session work in Santa Monica. Now, I, so, I saw you did a ton of stuff with uh, Harry Gregson Williams. Uh, yeah. Very, lots of cool credits with that. Is that the sort of... Yeah. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, still doing that on a daily basis, and uh, and I'm grateful. No, that's, that's you're working on big stuff. What bands uh, did you start out in... Uh, I guess, in, was it in the L.A. scene or Santa Monica scene? or? Yeah, Santa Monica, I started with a band called K-38, mm -hmm. which is a surf spot in Mexico. We were a surf band. We did, like, surf music. We played all the parties. We played Madame Wong's constantly. We played mm. uh, the Troubadour once a month with a band called Halfway Home and Electro Flow and bands like that. And we... Uh, we were just a local band, and then I started to write original songs, and, and started taking more and more serious, and uh, on a surf trip in Mexico, uh -huh. and I went to audition for his new band, Portal for Prowse, that he wanted to do, and, and, uh, and we hit it off, and it worked out, and we wrote a couple of records and toured the world, and the rest is history. You bonded by surf. Bonded by yeah. Yeah, that's cool. What was that that writing process like? Um, playing and playing in that band. I mean, that that's such a great band. Um, well, what happened was James Addiction was at their peak, and they had made you know two incredible records. Actually, three. Ritual had just you know been released, and 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 they were doing the first Lollapalooza, and. And he said, you know what, after the well of losing wants to do porno. And, and I was like, you know, I, I, at first I passed and said, I just want to do my own band with my brother and play the, the second stage uh -huh. at Lollapalooza in Irvine. And then, uh, then we got together and then the, the concept of adding a DJ to the band would made it different than James Addiction. It wasn't just a, another uh, four piece rock band. Right. You know, right. Um, there was a fifth element, and it was this DJ. So Skate Master Tate flying samples of it. So I thought that was cool. So then we went to Skate Master Tate's house one night, and he was he played. He was DJing uh, Riders on the Storm from the Doors. Wow. And I pulled out my bow, and we wrote this song called Orgasm over Riders on the Storm. Very cool. And then he was doing some salsa stuff, and then we wrote a song called Miha over that. So anyway, we, we, we wrote three songs with this guy's 
Gate Master Tape DJ and music, and I wrote these songs over them. Huh. And they were called Curse Female, uh, Miha, and Orgasm. Wow. Off the first record. Wow. And so that I go, that's different, you know, where we're going to write. And then when we turned the songs into Warner Brothers, they said, you're crazy, because we had whole songs underneath them, like... We wrote songs on top of Riders on the Storm. Mm-hmm. And they're like, you can't do that. You can't, you know, and so they talked us out of it. And then I did a band called Lance Armstrong in 2010 till now, yeah. where we've done full mashups, mm-hmm. you know? And so, um, so I guess it was just too ahead of its time, which was great because we made great music with just the DJ throwing samples over it instead of whole songs. Um, I saw some a video of you doing the orgasm song. It's really cool. You know, you're, you're oh, yeah. And Perry's voice, this melody is always awesome. You know, yeah. And um, also, I saw you. I saw you did some stuff with Peter Murphy, which is yeah. Like, how, I did two two tours with him and a record. Wow. Yeah. Tell me a little about working with Peter Murphy. Well, he's. I mean, he also sang on. Uh, a record that I did, you know, so we've done a couple of records together where he sang on my record with, I did with Harry Gregson Williams, a project called Rambian that mm-hmm. was on very underground. Mm-hmm. And then, uh, we did an album together, uh, just for love, mm-hmm. uh, Peter Murphy's just for love. It's a live album, which is me on guitar synthesizer and a violin player. We did a whole tour like that. It was the hardest tour of my life because I was supporting everything with a guitar synthesizer and, you know, like, uh, at the time there wasn't like a laptop or anything. So it was like, it was 2000 and we did, uh, those using this rolling guitar synthesizer doing piano sounds and drums on it and, and, uh, you know, using it and floating everything with a violin player and him singing. And that was incredible. Wow. And then the tour before that, we had Kevin Askins on drums, Eric Avery on bass, and and you know, uh, uh, drum. You know, we had uh, uh, what else? And then we had this guy on keyboards, and so that was like more of a traditional band. So that was easier for me. Right. Not as much pressure. And the show that I'm going to do at the Viper Room is now just me alone. Because I, you know, the, there was a rush that I got from doing that with Peter Murphy. Uh-huh. That now I'm going to cover everything all by myself. I'm going to play and sing, and then use a looper and then a, a laptop to DJ also. Very cool. Yeah, yeah so. lots of lots of technology going on there. Yeah, but then also very strict where there's nothing and it's just like a guitar and singing and the bow. Know, where, yeah, but well, well, the bow I'll use as I. At DJ, you know, mm-hmm. so so like I'll be singing like 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 if Bob Dylan, like an acoustic, a guy with his guitar, you know, yeah, like Robert Johnson. I'll do just vocal and guitar with no effects, nothing, a dry sound. Then I'll do something and I'll step on a looper and loop myself and accompany myself. Then I'll DJ and bend sounds and and stutter sounds and and then mash things up and move things over and. No, just be very creative with man and machine. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's very cool. It's gonna sound good in there too. <laughs> it's a, it's gonna, it's a good sounding room. Um, yeah, and it's, I make it keep it simple. So I just go direct into a direct box mono, uh-huh. and then a vocal, and uh-huh. everything is 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 mixed down into mono. Cool. And uh, it's pretty easy. What do you think of when you think of the Viper Room? I think of Johnny Depp, River Phoenix, uh, uh, Kate Moss, um, you know, the Chili Peppers, John Frusciante, uh, just the stuff that I lived there and the experiences that I had there. Any memories of any shows you saw there or anything like that? Um, there was one time... I got asked to play there, and it was right when, uh, right at the ending of Porno for Paros. Not the end. We never broke up. We just, you know, I needed to get well. I was uh, very sick with cancer and heroin addiction. Are you okay now? Yeah, it's 
miracle. You know, uh, 22 years sober uh, and uh, 23 years in remission of cancer. Amazing. So, yeah, so, um, I, you know, it was a gift from God. And so I feel, um, yeah, I mean, I've, saw, I've seen some incredible talent there, and I got to play there. We did some underground improv shows, you know, Porno for Power showed up there, and it jumped up on stage and played at gigs there. Mm -hmm. Um we've uh yeah i've just gone in there to hang out and party and and see and just see different bands mm -hmm. um and musicians um oh, cool and then i was i played an acoustic set at the downstairs bar mm. that you guys have mm. once That's there was a girl that that um i was seeing and i went and gave played guitar for her when she sang mm. so that was fun and yeah. What whatever happened to uh what was the bass player of Porno's uh the blonde guy's name? Um I know his name. Mark Tyne Lenovo? Yeah. Uh, yeah. whatever happened to Mark Tyne? Is he still playing? Well what happened well, I mean he, he married uh the married with children girl. Chris, uh, Christine Applegate. Yeah, Christine Applegate. Mm -hmm. So he, he married uh Mark Tyne and Perry would were like oil and water. They just didn't mix, huh. you know. Hmm. Uh, musically, it was it was really fun and creative, but there was, um, you know, per, the personality. They're like two alpha males or something. I don't know, yeah. but it's it's like to try to uh, to get them together to do anything. I mean, I have thirteen songs written for Four for Priors that we had written. While we were still going, like we we were ready for the third record, but you know, drugs and egos and volatility just could never get it together. Mm. Then I tried. We tried to do it, like I think three years ago, four years ago, with me, Mike Watt, and, and then I went in in we rented this house and we tried to start doing it. And then Perkins and Perry, they were they were disagreeing about like Perry wanted a more electronic and. Steve wanted more of this, and then what always happens is they just do a Jane's addiction thing, and they go do Jane's shows, and mm -hmm. they do Jane's shows, mm -hmm. and so, um, and I've always been at peace with whatever the situation is because um, I just play, yeah. you know. I, I'll yeah. just I just play. I don't I don't. To me, it's it's if I did it for the prop for the people and the property and the prestige, I would not be doing it unless yeah. I was playing Lollapalooza or Woodstock or some big uh, awards show where there's people, property, and prestige, where I'll play a coffee house for three people or an open mic or I'll go this and I'll go. I just have to play. Yeah, and you, know? you, you get just as much out of it doing that, you know? <laughs> yeah, because, yeah, it's for God. It's between me and the Holy Spirit, and I I have to, do, I'll get sick. Yeah. I'll get sick. Yeah. And the thing is, is I got asked to play guitar for David Lee Roth. They're going to, he's doing these Van Halen, all of the Van Halen catalog, which oh. is really difficult to play and stuff. And, uh, and I was, like, really excited at first because I'm a huge fan, and I was working on it, and then I was finally... Like, and then I talked to the management. I said, I want to do new music. Can we do new music? Like, we'll mash up Van Halen with it. You no, know, we don't want to do any new music. This, he wants to only do the old catalog, and that's it. Mm. Just like the records. And I said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Because the amount of time and energy that I have to do to stay in shape to be able to even do that, I wouldn't be able to, to be creative at all. Right. And so I, for me, for health, I have to do 50% creativity and 50% conclusions. So when I do a song, like when I get up, when I, when I play on Thursday, I don't have any plans. There's no preconceived anything. I just look at the room and then... Read it. And then read it and then go. And, that, and that's what I've been doing lately hmm. with, at my gigs is I don't have a plan. I mean, yeah, the laptop has a catalog in it of sounds and stuff. And the, and the guitar is tuned, you know, a certain way and stuff. So that's all predetermined. But I don't know what I'm going to pull out. And then there, there'll be times I'll, I'll even go, oh, man, I forgot to play that song. Oh, I wish I would have played this one. Or that one didn't work too good. Or, you know, 
and and it's okay but that's life yeah you know so it's it's more of like a life experience you know so sorry if i'm talking so much no. i'm just inspired no it's great it's great i love it no we're looking forward to seeing you on this on thursday it's good oh stuff, well, i just i'm so thank you i'm i'm and i'm a fan of the viper room and people and it's funny because i well, if i could say anything that i'm lucky about is that i don't show up anywhere in life going you know in 1994 i played woodstock and and we had the you know and i don't go yeah. I, I you know i'm a 54 year old gray man and i'm so lucky to have a gig yeah i just want a gig mm. any gig mm. i don't care where it is and so when i played the whiskey last you know and i showed up and i saw my name at the top in lights i was like oh my god no you know blah, blah, blah. and i went in there and they gave me this room i've never seen before the really nice room with like couches and and refrigerators and everything and then i was like i opened the door and I let him, said everyone come in no we're you know mm -hmm. and i'm not playing last let's be honest here let's you know you guys are bringing more people than me let's let's be real you know i understand i appreciate my history and that you guys are honoring me because of my history and my legacy and stuff but let's you know let me open for you let's share this room let's I, I respect and honor it, but I'm going to 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 show my gratitude because because that's really a gift, you know, it, to be able to still play and and to do this, you know, and and um, so I'm just uh, I come from a different place, you know. I'm coming from a place of uh, I and grateful you know I'm, I'm really really grateful to be playing the viper room it's a historic place there's the viper room and the whiskey those are the two coolest places yeah on the in hollywood and so for me to be able to to be invited to come play there i'm so grateful and uh i'm going to be honest and i want to make it historic if there's one person or 100 people i don't know you know yeah yeah uh, yeah it's making history <laughs> yeah a legacy. Yeah. Are you playing under your current, you know, your name or is you are you also doing Lance Herbstrong stuff still or are is there a like a pornos reunion? I mean you said you guys jammed a bit. That's three questions, sorry. Well everything's yeah, everything is Porno for Piles is still open, the L L C you know, the band. We never broke the band up. So it's still open and, and I know it's up Perry's sleeve. Yeah. And I know, you know, really and I'm cool. ready. We got these, yeah, we got these songs and everything. Um, Lance Herb's song, we're still, we're still going. You know, we, we, we toured the world. We've done a lot with Lance Herb's song. So now we've sort of like, you know, I'm doing something different right now. And what I'm doing is just my solo stuff. Cool. You know, we, which is, I DJ Lance Herb's song. I play Porno for Paros. I mash up Porno for Paros. I play my solo stuff. I do covers. So it's basically a history of everything I've done by myself. And I play the room. You know, if the room is, is I, I played this gig in Dibiazas. It was all kids. It was like high school kids that opened up for me. And there was high school, you know, it was all um, high school kids. So I played trap music and dubstep music and jammed over it. And the kids loved it, you know. Where if I would have sang you know, old rock and roll songs, they would have left, you mm -hmm. know? Mm -hmm. So I play the room. I don't come with a plan. I come with, you know, what can I do to bring peace to the room and, and make them interested? And if I can't, then I sh do a short set and leave with my tail between my legs. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, I saw you sometimes do some more Lollapalooza stuff too. Do you? Well, I've played every single Lollapalooza that I ever was, except for this year. Hmm. This was the first year I didn't play. I just was like, I was invited to play, and I was just like, I think I'm done. It's like Forrest Gump <laughs> running. You know, like when he's running and running, running, running. Yeah. I just feel like to try to keep that and get on the plane and fly to Chicago and do, you know, just to just to say, hey, I did it again. I did it again. I did it again. It was like you know, um, I uh, there's something that that um, was very 
in my heart about it um, up up to a point, and then and then something happened where I just I just um, I don't know. I don't know what happened yeah. this year. I've just gone. I'm not interested. I, you know, I'd rather play the video game awards or go play a video game festival, right, you know, right. or something, or the Viper Room. <laughs> you know, what I mean? I'd rather play the Viper Room. Uh, it's cooler to me. Yeah, cool. right now. Cool. Very cool. All right. Well, we're we're looking forward to this. It's this Thursday, the seventh, and. Uh, we'll be there I'll be there looking forward to seeing you and, and thank you very much for talking to me Peter oh thank you so much and I'm I'm really grateful to uh, to come play there and thank you so much Tommy alright take it easy have a good evening you have a good evening too thank you bye. okay bye bye don't forget to subscribe to five or more questions with Tommy Black on your favorite podcast app and visit ViperRoom.com for upcoming shows. Wow, these new Music One headphones sound really great.